in the previous recording, I have said that even after releasing the protein from the ribosome in translation, that protein rarely is the final thing because we have a set of processes called post-translational modifications or PTMs, okay? So first and foremost, usually we call the protein resulting from the release from the ribosome as the nascent protein. So it's like, you know, in, if, if it was a human, this is like a baby, okay? And this has to grow or mature or develop into something else um, before we actually find use in that particular protein. So what are the possible modifications that could happen? First, there could actually be a trimming of residue. So in other words, maybe if I have like uh, a certain set of amino acids for that protein, uh, maybe what if the nascent protein is comprised of 100 amino acids, it could be trimmed down or that means we, we can remove some amino acids from the N terminus and or the C terminus and maybe from the 100 amino acids, it could be trimmed down to 70. And then maybe the 70 amino acids is now the final um, product. And um, that is the case for uh, many proteins, especially considering the fact that not all proteins have methionine as their N-terminal amino acid, right? I mean, if we remember in the translation process, the start codon is always AUG. However, if you try to survey, search for the uh, sequence of amino acids for uh, some of the popular proteins we have, at the end terminus, they don't have methyl. And it shouldn't it be the case that since AUG is always the start codon, your end terminus would always have methionine as the first amino acid. But the fact that many proteins don't have methionine as their first amino acid means that probably the methionine that was originally present was cut or trimmed post-translationally, okay? Next, folding. Remember, when we were talking about proteins, I did mention that there are many levels of organization, right? And it so happens that many proteins are only functional in their secondary to quaternary levels. The moment that we produce our nascent protein, usually, it's only in the primary level. So again, if you go back to our proteins, it's just like a string without any helical or helical arrangement, doesn't look like sheets, doesn't have any residue interactions. And therefore, from the primary level going to the higher levels, the process of folding has to be done. So like folding is the opposite of denaturation, if you think of it, right? If denaturation means from the higher levels to the primary level, folding is the initial process going from primary to the higher levels. Although it is possible that some proteins can do folding on their own, it is unlikely for many cases. So those nascent proteins are oftentimes assisted by so-called chaperone proteins or molecular chaperones. The most popular ones being mentioned in biochemistry textbooks are the HSPs or the heat, heat shock proteins. And uh, the way that we treat them, call them, calling them chaperones like that means basically we think of nascent proteins as, as babies, right? And then chaperones are like assistants that help them grow and fold themselves in the proper ways such that they have the proper residue interactions. Because the thing is, if proteins end up being misfolded, having interactions that are not supposed to happen, it may end up being useless or sometimes even harmful, okay? And uh, although I will not be discussing it in detail here, do note that some rare diseases are actually the result of proteins which have misfolded. Well, one of the most uh, popular diseases being uh, proposed to, to originate from this problem is Alzheimer's disease, but that in itself has a lot of study still ongoing. Anyway, another possible, and I think with the, the thing which takes up most of the, the bulk and complexity of PTMs are the many different residue modifications. Because basically when you say residue modification, it is the modification of the 
R groups in the amino acids. And by modification, anything goes in organic chemistry. Sometimes we could observe uh, acylation, sometimes alkylation. Uh, basically, think of any functional group. It can be a residue modification. I can add an OH, I can add a COOH, I could add a phosphate, I could add a sugar, and so on. And uh, every single of this has different purposes, meanings, different special cases, different significances. So, um, of course, I cannot uh, cover that one by one. But it, I think you should at least know that this is really possible for proteins after they have been released from the ribosome. Maybe, for example, something that I have mentioned in my recording for proteins. Remember that for collagen, you must have not only lysine and proline, but also hydroxyproline and hydroxylysine. So the, fat, the, the process of converting them into the hydroxylated forms with the aid of vitamin C is, in a way, another PTM. And then, of course, letter D, very uh, important in uh, uh, cell biology, okay, is the idea that once we make our proteins, remember, our proteins are made up in the ribosome. The ribosomes are in the cytoplasm. Sometimes the ribosomes freely floating in the cytoplasm, or sometimes the ribosomes can be embedded in the ER. We call them rough ER, right? And it's the case that we have to perform some residue modifications. Usually we add sugars to them so that we could kind of uh, tell the proteins where to go. So there are some ways that uh, 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 we can tell the protein, hey, you should go to the inside of the endoplasmic reticulum. Hey, um, you're gonna have to go to the cell membrane. Hey, you're gonna have to assist in the cytoskeleton. Okay, hey, you're gonna be part of the lysosome. These things are very complicated. It's an entire topic of its own, okay? It's, it's, it's very complicated, that's what you need to know, but at least you should, I think, um, um, be, be aware that most of the uh, complex things going on to the proteins so that they are told where to go and they actually go to where they're supposed to go are initiated by the ER and the Golgi apparatus. So by the coordination of these two major cell or organelles, we could uh, really target them properly because if a protein does not go to its intended site, it's supposed to be, for example, a uh, uh, um, uh, a transmembrane protein. It's supposed to be probably a receptor for, for some ligands or neurotransmitters, but it doesn't go to the cell membrane. It's practically useless. Or maybe if it's a structural protein that could help uh, maintain the integrity of the cell, but it, it ends up going somewhere else, being stored in a certain organelle, it won't be able to do that. So uh, equally important to the synthesis of the proper protein and its proper folding is that it should be targeted in the proper place. That's why there are also some diseases that could arise if these proteins don't go to where they're supposed to go. And then again, uh, let me just repeat that that, that thing is uh, a separate topic on its own. But at least, as much as uh, I just discussed these in a general way, you should uh, know that there are a lot of things still that need to happen to our nascent protein after they have been released to the ribosome. Once again, those things in general are called PTMs.